welcome to Cogra's Jubilee Oval for our first NEC Big Game for 1985. And today's match between home team St George and the Eels of Parramatta. The Saints today to be captained by Craig Young. Their full team, Brian Johnson fullback, Brian Johnston and Steve Morris the wings, Michael O'Connor and Michael Beattie in the centres. The halves, O'Grady and Lenane. The forwards, Colin Fraser, Graham Wynn, Chris Walsh, Craig Young, Richard Jones and Pat Jarvis. And the Dragons coached again by Roy Masters. Parramatta today to be led by international lock forward Ray Price. The side is David Lydiard, Steve Broughton, Michael Cronin, Steve Eller, Graham Atkins, Ron Quinn, Greg Henry, Ray Price, Don Price, Peter Wynn, Paul Mayers, Ken Stewart and Stan Jurd, and the Eels coached by John Money. The last time they met was at the cricket ground in the final last year, Parramatta winning 8-7, but in that side, the names of Peter Sterling, Brett Kenny, Paul Taylor, and blockbusting winger Eric Groth. Referee for today is Greg McCallum, as all vantage points are taken, as our NEC Big Game in the Winfield Cup Premiership kicks off for 1985. So Cronin starts it, sending it down deep inside the 22 line, and Graham Wynn brings it back out and immediately is tackled over the top by Brother Peter and underneath by Don Price. Jarvis goes ahead, Stewart is over the top. Don Price was in there too with Peter Wynn. And here's Lonane now, kicking on the third. They've got a fairly strong breeze at their backs, St George. As um, Lydiard has to go right back into the in goal. And he'll only just make the field of play. Broughton. Lydiard now comes outside the 10 metre line. Yes, that breeze has sprung up quite strongly now, and it's going to be a very big advantage to St George in the first half. Graham Hughes is, of course, on the sidelines, and uh, we're covered here in the commentary position. What's it like, Graham, down there? Well, as you said, Ray, it's a very, very strong breeze, and judging by that kick from the name, uh, that's a length of the field effort, and I'm sure that in this first session that we're going to see St George use it consistently. Well, Stan Jurd has had his headgear ripped off by Craig Young. And McCallum is going to give a penalty to Parramatta. I must admit, I can't see what's to be gained by ripping a fellow's headgear off. Maybe you can tell me, Bill Anderson. Well, I don't know that it's to any advantage, and I, I thought it had been made fairly clear by the league that they'd asked the referees to clamp down on the ripping off of headgear. It's, it's just not a part of the game. It's a fairly unprofessional thing to do, really, and I'm glad that McCallum has stamped it out from the word, st word go. Well, Jurd took it up, was met by Craig Young. Jarvis came over the top. There was a roar from the crowd. They thought there was a swinging arm in the tackle, and again, Jurd has lost his headpiece. It's come now back to Don Price. That wind is doing... Funny things with this football. That's a good handout by Don Price. Back to Ray Price. Bit of rugby union in there. And they were both pretty good exponents of that game. Stewart. Through Henry. Peter Wynn. Stands. Gets a pass away. Steve Morris can't take it. Jones has got it for St George. It'll be a scrum. The greatest criticism made of Parramatta so far this year, this year in their National Panasonic Cup game and also in the trials they've played is the fact they haven't played open football and from the way they've started this match they've certainly tried to uh, to offset that. They've moved the ball around, they've backed up and popped up the, bo the, the, the ball in passes and the only thing they'll need to watch is they do it when there's no pressure on. Lenane comes the blind, he's wrapped up by Henry, who's in the side today for Mike Eden who played with that broken hand on Wednesday. And young Henry has been called up to the top position now. Jarvis, Jones, Young, and a diving tackle by Price takes Young to ground. Through Lenane it goes, and here's Walsh hitting it up very, very strongly. Five tackles gone now for St George. Here comes the bomb. Back to Lenane. He's gone for the line, and he's found it. That's a good kick. That's a good kick by this youngster. The St George number seven, Steve Lenane, 21 years of age from Dubbo in 1982, and has played lower grades with St George up until now. 
Henry feeds, it's a penalty to St. George. Feet across against Parramatta. So this differential will see St. George in a very strong attacking position. Michael Beattie taking the touch finder. And so what will the Dragons put together here? Jones takes the tap, runs ahead, decoys going left and right. Johnson hits into it, but Parramatta's come up with the ball. And that's a costly mistake for St George to make. This is Lydiard. Oh, good piece of work by Lydiard. Through Henry to Don Price, he only just has it. Wrapped up by Pat Jarvis. Now it's Peter Wynn as they hit this blind side. Graham Atkins tries to burrow through. He almost succeeded. It was pulled down by Brian Johnston and Chris Walsh. Play just beyond the Parramatta 22 and they're running into a very strong breeze. Here's Cronin. Held up the top by Jones. Down below by Colin Fraser. Lenane covers it up and knocks on. So it'll be a Parramatta loose head, Parramatta feed. <laughs> Penalty to Parramatta. He's got Jones, the St George hooker. Of course, St George lost John Dowling in the off-season and then tragically lost to young Guider. He was most definitely a star of the future. And uh, St George are a little bit thin on in the hooking department. That man at the moment is filling the role. Stewart. Parramatta, they haven't seen very much of the St George territory and there's 10 minutes gone. Henry. Playing it back to Ray Price. Now to Peter Wynn. Michael Cronin. He's put it down. They're standing up very, very close on the uh, Parramatta uh, champion centre three-quarter Cronin. Parramatta are looking to pass the ball at almost every opportunity, but football's the game where you've got to be going forward before you can spread the ball, and they're not going forward. They need on the first couple of rucks to have someone to cart the ball up for them, hard and strong, and then they can think about offloading and tackles. Let's take you to the sidelines now. Here's Graham Hughes with Perry Haddock. Thanks, Ray. Perry, how long is that injury going to cost him? Well, Graham, I hope it only lasts a week. Um, I saw my doctor this morning, and the, the knee doesn't seem too bad, but it's the hip mainly that, that I'm more worried about. What can you tell us about young Steve Lenane? He's, he's been in everything. He seems to, well, he doesn't seem to lack any confidence. He's attempted a field goal already. Yes, well, uh, Steve's always been a good player. He was a very good player last year, and uh, he's going to keep him on my toes this year. Well, he's got my spot now. <laughs> that number seven out there. So, uh, it's up to me now, I think. All right, thanks. Good luck with the injury. Thanks. Graham Hughes from the sidelines. In our NEC big game. Parramatta attacking thanks to a couple of penalties. And it's Jerd now playing it on the 22. Stewart through Henry and now Don Price is uh, put down by Walsh and by Jarvis. Jarvis all steamed up. Stewart throws a dummy, then goes himself. And so Mayers goes to dummy half. Peter Wynn. Well, Quinn has put it on the ground. Parramatta bumbling their way around in the first 10 minutes. Five times they've put it down. We couldn't blame Quinn for that drop ball. It was a bad pass to him. He was under tremendous pressure. And the golden rule is if you're in a bad position, don't pass the ball to someone because they're probably in a worse one. St. George winning the scrum. Lenane wrapped up. Young. But you can see St. George are taking the ball forward. When they hit the ball up, they're making inroads into the Parramatta defence. And conversely, when Parramatta take the ball up, they're not. They're being forced backwards. Jones. He's, he's uh, injured. Against Parramatta for inside the five. 
Meantime, the St. George hooker is down to receive attention. This was the tackle on Jones, and you could see the pain that he was going through from the time that tackle took him. Very big kick by Beatty, finding touchdown on the Parramatta 22. O'Grady, Jarvis. Steve Morris is up very flat. Just watch for a chip here. Lenane sees a gap. Lenane taken by Mayers over the top. Blind side to O'Grady now. Taken by Jerd around the legs. Mayers over the top. Graham Wynn comes across the ground. Straightens and the ball has been taken from him. It's a penalty. A penalty to St George, but... By golly, McCallum, he must have called held or something because it seemed a premature ruling to give. He's ruled that the player, his progress had been halted and he couldn't effect a pass. And so he's given the penalty to the Saints. 24 years of age, Michael O'Connor. And played Union, of course, in Brisbane before 1983. He's got the goal-kicking responsibilities with the Dragons this year. He's got the fairly big shoes of Steve Gearin to fill. There's the kick by Mike O'Connor. Never in doubt. St. George leading Parramatta by two points to nil. 15-minute marker. Michael Cronin with the restart. comes out with it. Pat Jarvis has put it down. It's an easy ball to come up with for Parramatta. Jarvis must have taken his eyes off it. Jerd. That's a, that's a very, very heavy tackle on Jerd. Referee has gone in. Now Jerd. Jerd is not at all well. Walsh has been called out. Certainly it didn't warrant a sin bin or anything of that nature. Here it is again. Michael Cronin with a chance to level the score. 24 metres out, 15 in from touch. Grandstand side, into the breeze. There it goes, it'll come around, but it's not this time. And it's St George that bring it back into the field of play. Still, St George 2, Parramatta 0. Brian Johnston. Jones, he's OK again. Good tackle over the top there by Peter Wynn. He's been, uh, he and Don Price have really been working hard in the tackles. I'll get a readout on their tackles for you in a moment, but they seem to have taken, with Ray Price, a hell of a lot of the defensive duties. Paramount half Henry to play it. Broughton. Peter Wynn's made seven, Don Price five. Here's Michael Cronin now. Huge responsibility for him. Steve Ella, he still hasn't touched the ball, Steve Ella. Um, and we're 18 minutes into the match. Mayers goes up. Three St. George men are there to meet him and put him on the ground. Last tackle for Parramatta now. Henry puts the kick up. Midfield up and under. And it's down to Graham Wynn. 
So Graham Wynn plays it back to Brian Johnston. Tackled by Don Price and Ken Stewart. Jones, blindside for Jarvis. Number four is Beatty for St George. Jones. They seem to be able to make five and six metres every time they take a play. Whereas Parramatta seems to be labouring. Now what's he going to do here? Play on, he said, play on. And it's gone over the dead ball line. I thought he only had to dive on that ball. Yes, young Lemayne put his foot to the ball. It looked like it was close enough for the line for him to fall on it. And his momentum would have got, would have got him there. Well, that's what I was hesitating about. I was wondering whether he was going to penalise Steve Morris for actually tackling Steve Broughton, not in possession of the ball. There it was. That was just short of the line, and Lenane had to give it that little bit of a nudge. Oh, that's a very heavy tackle on Ken Stewart by Pat Jarvis. He turned him around, base over apex. Have a look at this. Rash, and down goes Ken Stewart. His mares. I was about to make the comment a few minutes ago. When is he going to run? Referee says play on. The crowd roar their disapproval. Steve Ellis got the ball. But once again, Parramatta are doing a lot of passing, but they're getting nowhere. No one's running forward with it with authority. Stewart takes it up. Mares. Charge down. There's a chance for Fraser. Lydiard has to cover it up. And Lydiard will play it. Six more tackles. Five metres out from the Parramatta line. Broughton running across the ground. Well, there's been a couple of close calls for the Eels, Graham. Yeah, they're looking very disorganised to me, Ray. They, see, they certainly do lack somebody to take control around the rucks. Uh, I know everybody you have read about it and heard about it all week about Peter Sterling, but uh, somebody's got to take control, possibly Mick Cronin, if he's got to get in there a lot closer to the ruck. Well, there he is in there close now, Cronin. He's reached the 22. And this is Ray Price passing to Stewart and then out to win and wide to Mayers. And Mayers, very well taken by Michael Beattie, ball and all. Here's Cronin now trying to evade O'Grady. He passes and finds Ella. Ella to Broughton. Broughton. Broughton's heading for the ground in one heck of a hurry. There are some huge hits out there, let me tell you. Young now. I see Michael Beatty is crouched in the background. He's injured. Lenane running into the forwards. Met by Ray Price. Jarvis, just outside the Parramatta 22 line now. Jones. Fraser, Lenane, Young. Young putting it down, a scrum will set just outside the Parramatta 22 line. As Greg Henry prepares to feed the scrum, let's take you to the sidelines. Graham's with Mike Eden. Mike, you managed to get away with it on Wednesday night, but uh, how long is the... St George fans have absolutely gone uh, right out of their tree here at the moment. Fairly simple try really this one. Lenane picked up the ball on the blind side. The fullback Brian Johnson had linked up and we can see Steve Morris doing a great job backing up. He skirts his winger, takes the pass off Johnson and then plunges over for the four points. Brian Johnson and then it was easy sailing for Steve Morris. So Mike O'Connor from the touchline, just outside the 22. He's looking for the extras, but he fails. And so the scoreline, St. George, six, Parramatta, yet to score.
Valley's latest album, Parade. So don't miss the Spandau Ballet Parade special limited edition tour souvenir colored vinyl with a deluxe fold-out personality poster. Parade features only when you leave and their latest single, Round and... So catch Spandau Ballet touring all states March 1985 and the limited edition Spandau Ballet Parade Pack at your nearest record dealer on Christmas Records and Tapes. Now, let me apologize to Graham Hughes and to Michael Eden. You wouldn't believe it. Every time you go to the sidelines, there seems to be a try come out of it. Sorry, Graham. You're right, Ray, but back to the broken hand, Mike. How long now? Well, I hope to be back for the North Sydney game, which is three weeks' time, but uh, yeah, if not, then the week after. We were just mentioning the sides looking a little bit disorganised. Yes, well, uh, the forwards that we've got are basically uh, the same as the, those that went around last year, and they've just got to get used to a another halfback in there organising the play. You know, I'm hoping to take over that role, but, you know, as you say, in a month's time. What about that breeze that's behind St George? How many points would you think it's worth? Well, I'm hoping it's worth seven at the moment. Um, you know, we were hoping to keep them down to two or four points against the wind. Uh, you know, they won the toss. We were going to run with it if we had not won, but hopefully it's seven-point breeze. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ray. Ten minutes of the first half to go. Straight through. Lydia, met by Brian Johnson. Atkins. That's the second tackle for the Yales. They are wide and they are deep. Through to Quinn, now to win, now to Don Price. Stewart. Peter Wynn. He's lost it. And another scrum will go down. 15 metres out from the St George line. Set Atkins back on an urgent run. Beatty came down the ground fast and it's gone into touch and I think it's been taken over the touch line by Atkins. You'll have to wait and see which way the touch judge is ruling. I think you'll find that Graham Atkins took it over the, uh, the touch line. See it again on the NEC replay. And that's the way he's ruled. Here's Brian Johnson. <laughs> Playing at 35 metres out. Johnston, away from one. Tackled in the centre of the ground. Morris. Morris stands and gets it back to Jones. And Jones runs into the shoulder of Ray Trice. St George on the boil at the moment. A Grady to Steve Morris. And Morris is tackled. Ten metres out from the line now. St George leading by six to nil. Jones out of a tackle. Pulled down in the centre of the ground. Nine metres out. This is the fifth tackle. Lenane works the cross with Young. Young puts it up. Oh, there's been a player. Pulled down in the back play. Somebody held out a, a hand or an arm sure but the St George player his body went forward the rest of him stopped it was Paul Mayers or Mick Cronin which one is it? It's Mick Cronin Mick Cronin's been sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes Michael Cronin to the sin bin for 10 minutes and I think that'll be his first visit to the sin bin ever
I've got a memory that Michael Cronin was sent off in, uh, I think, two years ago. Two or three years ago, but I don't think he's been to the sim bin. But that'll probably start some, uh, <laughs> some rugby league chat around the bars and the lounge rooms. Mike O'Connor, round the corner kicker. 22 metres out. Six minutes in front of half-time. And 6-0 currently the scoreline in favour of the Dragons, but he's missed it. Well wide. So there it is again. St George 6, Parramatta 0. NEC big game. So Steve Eller is going to take the 22 dropout. And here's Morris. Running into Peter Wynn and I would think that Slippery would be far better off running into somebody else at this stage of the day. He's had a very energetic game, Steve Morris. He's been looking for work and on a couple of occasions St George, when they've got into Parramatta's quarter, have chipped for him. They obviously think that his pace on the flank is, uh, is a big advantage to them. So the referee is playing the advantage. Pat Jarvis is limping rather badly. Lydiard plays the ball. I sometimes wonder when you talk about the referees playing the advantage and you come up with the ball about 35 metres down the ground whether, or not it's an, whether it is in fact an advantage. Certainly won't be if they drop it in the next few tackles, but he's not to know that, is he? Peter Wynn out wide. Mayers gets the kick in. Very high to Brian Johnson. Steve Morris in possession. Young. Jarvis getting his ankle strapped. Walsh. Don Price is on his back. He tried to make that tackle, but he's come out on the wrong side of it. Craig Young. Brian Johnston. Lemayne was interfered with. O'Grady. A little kick ahead for O'Connor. O'Connor, he'll score. Oh, that's a sensational try. That's great stuff. Tremendous rugby league. Michael O'Connor, the try scorer. Graham O'Grady using the little kick over the top. And O'Connor regathers on the full. Beautiful stuff. Well, this was the third or fourth time in this match that St George have kicked to Steve Morris's wing, but this time the O'Grady kick came down to the arms of Michael O'Connor. And if we watch O'Connor here, he never took his eye off the ball at any stage. He watches it in all the way, takes it in one hand. He's got enough speed built up to be able to push Liviard out of the way, and he bashes his way over to score a tremendous try. Graham O'Grady. One of the game's unsung heroes, and he has been for a number of years. But rated very highly by Coach Roy Masters. Mike O'Connor with the attempt. Wide angle. This one looks better. He's got it. He scores the try and converts. Sending St George to a 12 points to nil lead now. Tries like that must bring... Some happy memories back to an old bulldog, Graham. Takes you back to that 1980 grand final, uh, Ray, of course. A uh, very, very clever play from Graham O'Grady. Restart for the Eels. Brian Johnson. That's Colin Fraser. Craig Young.
Steve Morris. Lenane. Oh, Atkins has bumbled it. And it'll be a scrum about five metres, a little bit more, on the Parramatta side of halfway. A Grady. Beatty. They had a beautiful back line formed up. Graham Wynn now. Cut down beautifully around the legs. That was a Ray Fry special, that was. Jones driven into the ground. And the first half finishing as it started. At a cracking pace with some really heavy tackles. There's the scoreline, and here's Graham Hughes. Yes, thanks, Ray. Well, St. George went into this match as red-hot favourites, and they've played superbly in this first half. Parramatta, for mine, haven't shown me anything or suggested anything in attack which could prove that they could pull back this 12-point deficit in this upcoming second half. Two in all, and the topping the list, Fraser and Young with a neat dozen. 90 for Parramatta, and uh, Peter Wynn and Ken Stewart topping the tackle count there. Paul Mayers is way down on six. So 12 nil in favour of St George. With this man, Mike O'Connor, scoring a great try. And the other was scored by Steve Morris. And so now St George running into a breeze that is gusting as strongly. 12 nil St George. Lydia tackled. Oh dear, there was a clash of uh, heads there, and young Lenane has come off uh, second best. Stewart. Lenane down after that uh, head clash with, I think, one of his own teammates is Ray Price. There's the um, held for six information. Both sides have held it for four times each. And that breeze immediately being used by Parramatta and Peter Wynn chases Burgess. Burgess is off for St George, replaced by Brian, uh, Brian Johnson, replaced by Glenn Burgess, wearing jumper number 14. Just outside the Dragons 22, Craig Young. Taken by three Parramatta tacklers. Is Jarvis around the legs, the halfback Henry. Renane, Walsh. Five tackles gone for St. George. And Lenane kicks and uh, finds touch. Good kick. Finding touch. Penalty for an incorrect feed. So Beatty takes the kick for line. The tap will be taken by Jones. Out to Craig Young, the run around for Jones and then for Jarvis. Jarvis just outside the quarter. Lenane, O'Grady, O'Connor puts it down and Parramatta has come up with the ball. And there goes Don Price, picked up and belted into the ground. Quinn, Ray Price, well, that's outside of Ray Price there, we had Paul Mayer, Stan Jurd, and Peter Wynn. <laughs> Penalty to Parramatta. What are you thinking, Graham Hughes, down there? 
Well, exactly what you and Bill are discussing, Ray. Uh, there's no such thing in this Parramatta side as clean ball to the back line. Never do you see it go from half-back 5-8 and through to the centres. I just can't work uh, the Parramatta side and Johnny Mooney out. I, I don't think that'd be his tactics. It should be going straight to those centres. Two of the best in the world. And there it is. One of the other problems that, uh, that, St. George, that Parramatta are going to have is the mood that Craig Young is in. Craig Young's relishing the role as captain. He's a tremendous player. He's a seasoned international. And if, some, if Parramatta aren't careful, he's going to start offloading balls in this second half and run havoc. Brian Johnston. Jones. Lenane cut out uh, Young and gave it to Graham Wynn. Down the middle of the ground. Hate to see him when he's 100 percent Out to Jones now. He's done some handy stuff today, the St. George Hooker. He mightn't have the biggest fan club in the world, but he's done some good things today. Little kick by Craig Young, taken in by David Lydiard, and Lydiard put in the touch by Michael Beatty. So it'll be a St. George feed. Penalty for an incorrect feed against Lenane. Cronin taking the line finder. Just looking at that feed of the uh, scrum by young Lenane. He's also got that necessary quality that halfbacks have to have. <laughs> the ability to be a bit cheeky and prepared to cheat. But that was almost grand larceny. All out of the same mould, halfbacks and hookers. Ray Price spinning it around, and oh, Ron Quinn. He couldn't have taken on a bigger man. He took on uh, Craig Young. Stewart's popped it out the back door. Jurd has got it. Well, let's see what Parramatta can do here. They've got their 5'8", half, two centres and a winger on the left-hand side. So they brought it right and threw it out over the touchline. Scrum will pack just on the Parramatta side of halfway, the name to feed. St. George ball. And Graham O'Grady has galloped off into an opening. There's big trouble. Oh, Beatty's put it down. O'Grady goes back to cover it up. But that was just a case of passing and catching and then running. And St. George would most definitely have scored a try. There's the replay of it. O'Grady. He was able to make that bust because the Parramatta inside backs went up too quickly. In fact, uh, they were almost behind the St. George scrum before the ball came out. Uh, but they came up so quickly, O'Grady slid into a little gap. But a certain try went begging because somebody couldn't hold the football. The Parramatta have got a full back line on the right-hand side. It's half, five, eight, centre, centre and winger. Now, surely they'll get the ball to them from this situation. Man. That's up through a forward. Not that there's anything wrong with taking it up through a forward, but they've got to be setting for field position if they do that. Henry decides to step and try go to try and go through, but he's tackled. 30 metres out. I can see Don Price is waving to the Parramatta bench. Quinn, Cronin. Cronin coming back into the centre of the ground. It's on the ground. It's with Mayers. Six more tackles. Mayers has put it down. St George have got it. Johnston, taken by Lydia. Young. Lenane, Walsh. Lenane again. Graham Wynn, little ball to Beatty, to Johnston. Johnston's got one to beat. Lemayne's on his inside. Oh, but he stands David Lydiard up. Lydiard had two on one. And Brian Johnston absolutely has left Parramatta players clutching at midair. See it again. 
It was a simple switch of play from open to blind. Lenane, by going to the blind, created the extra number. Wynn gave a quick, a quick pass. Beattie gave the last pass. And then Brian Johnston was charging at our cameras. And Lydiard was the only man left. He had Lenane on his other side. And uh, that's a horror stretch for a fullback. But you've got to take somebody. And David Lydiard failed to go in and take the man with the ball. Lenane read the play well. He crossed back to the blind side, picked up Graham Will, shift, Graham Wynn, who shifted the ball onto Beattie. Beattie threw a good pass, I thought, to Johnson. Johnson summed up the situation well. He realised that Lydiard was in two minds, threw the dummy and crossed for the try himself. A very simple one, but a good one. Don Price off for Parramatta. I'll get his replacement for you in a moment. O'Connor's kick. He's got it. Connor has raised the flags and the hopes of the St George supporters, I would think, not just for today, but for the year. 18-0. Graham Hughes on the sidelines, the Parramatta replacement. Have... Graham Setri, Ray, who played midweek in the National Panasonic Cup. Thank you very much. Graham win. There they were again hitting that blind side that little switch of play. Greg Young. O'Grady. Oh, that's a good tackle by Mayers. Tremendous tackle by Mayers on Graham Wynn. Penalty to Parramatta. There it is again, that slow motion of it. It was a tremendous hit. Eighteen nil in favour of St George. You're watching the first of our NEC big games for 1985. Nice to be associated with this great company again, NEC, in 1985. Ray Price switching it. It's back with Jurd. Jurd reeling out of tackle after tackle. That's a good run by the big fellow. Quinn. Mears. He's lost it. St. George have got the ball. Craig Young. Burgess. O'Grady. <laughs> Mayors are going up again very hard then on Jarvis. Graham Wynn. BT back inside for Wynn. He's dropped it. It'll be a scrum. A sunny Sydney Sunday afternoon. And the footy fans are back. Parramatta's <laughs> clean heel. Quinn. With Cronin running decoy. Setri. Stewart. Stewart over the 22 line. Steve Ellett arrived, but it was too late. Through Henry to Quinn to Cronin. Cronin parceled up on the St. George 22. Mayors. This is Ron Quinn. Five tackles gone for uh, Parramatta. Charged down by Lenane for St. George. Not only that, he took it on the floor. And gets a penalty.
minutes gone, second half. Javis. Tackled by Jerd and Stewart. Lemayne. Walsh. Young, switching it across to Lenane. O'Grady. Beautiful play by O'Grady. He held the ball back. He's looking for support. It comes in the shape of Lenane, but far too late. Graham O'Grady with a beautiful piece of football there. Steve Morris now. Morris is five metres inside the quarter. And a penalty to get off the man they'll simply take the two points it's right in front and about 15 meters out this is why the penalty was given Morris trying to play it Stewart laying all over him this was Graham O'Grady watch him he's drawing the player committing the player and then at the last moment he steps off his left foot and throws a giant dummy and then burst into open country Mike O'Connor taking the attempted penalty. He should have little trouble with it, although he's got that breeze coming into him. He hits it. It looks sweet. It is. So St. George are giving Parramatta one heck of a hiding. 20 points to nil. Brian Johnston. Colin Fraser. Jones. Lenane. A neatly placed kick. Broughton brings it back. Jones and George Hooker, he looks like he's... Well, he, I, it looks to me as though he doesn't know where he is. He looked a very sick boy there for a couple of seconds. In fact, he still is. He's out on his feet, I think, Jones. He's working from... Uh, I think he's working on memory. He's in the dummy half, anyway. Grady again to Lenane. Lenane pulled down in a desperate tackle by Mayers. Six more tackles. O'Grady turns it into Jarvis. O'Grady's taken it upon himself to completely control this game. He's getting one and two off the rucks and so directing the St George play, and they're looking good working off him. Graham Wynn and Craig Young putting it together with Pat Jarvis. Back to Graham Wynn again. It's as if a few of the others just prepared the patient and he's decided he'll be the, the surgeon. Graham O'Grady. He's the uh, the conductor of this particular music that you're watching at the moment from Jubilee Oval. Music for St George. Lydiard. Midway between 22 and halfway. His own end of the ground. Peter Wynn. Back now to Setri. Setri tackled on the halfway. Jerd. Jerd was standing looking to offload it and then all of a sudden Craig Young went whack across the back. Jerd gets up slowly. Lydiard working with Quinn, putting Cronin into a hole. Atkins runs onto it neatly. Lydiard supports. They won't catch David Lydiard. Lydiard scores for Parramatta. Their first point.
points of the match. It was a combination of backs. Lydiard, Quinn, Cronin, and then Atkins was into the open, and Lydiard supported him nicely. He drew Burgess, and Lydiard picks up Parramatta's first points of the match. To be trailing now by 20 to 4. This was a very good backing up try by the Earls. Lydiard threw the pass to Quinn, looped around him, then transferred the ball onto Cronin. Cronin shrugged off one tackle, got his hands free, fired the ball onto Atkins. Atkins had Lydiard in support, who'd come back around after the initial pass, took the pass, set sail for the corner, and over he goes to score a good try for the Earls. I guess the Parramatta fans were beginning to think it wasn't going to come at all. McCronin taking the attempted conversion. His first for the season in Winfield Cup football. Hits it. He's got it. That's a magical kick from the sideline by Michael Cronin. 20 points to six in favour of the Dragons. The NEC big game. Well, Jones has come from the field. I told you earlier in commentary he looked as though he was anywhere bar at Cogra's Jubilee Oval. There's his replacement, Phil Ritchie, formerly from the North Sydney Club. Good effort by Jones. He's getting a big uh, round of applause from the Cogra fans. Lydia streaking with the ball downfield. Graham, do you know what was wrong with uh, Jones? Yes, Ray, I think that knock that he just took a few moments ago convinced Roy Masters that he'd had enough because at halftime he was checked, if you remember, from that other bad hit that he received in the first half when he went over on his ankle. Yeah. Paul Mayers. Going straight to Burgess. Sentry makes the tackle together with Stewart. Morris goes in from broken play and scampers out of dummy half. You've got to be careful with this fellow, particularly when play is a little bit broken. Now, R Phil Ritchie, he's playing in jumper 25. He will grab this last 12 minutes of the match, I would think, firmly between his teeth and shake the living daylights out of this slim chance that he's been given. Beatty now. Lenane. He's been a little general out there for the most part. Broughton is the dummy half. Steve Ella. You tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the fourth time in the match that Steve Ella's touched the ball. And that's crazy when you're talking about one of the world's best footballers. And we are at the 70th minute of the match. Mayers, centre kicking. That's a better type of kick. Burgess on a long run. It might prove to be very dangerous, as a matter of fact, because they've just got a draw and run. O'Connor's doing that now. Parramatta getting across in cover fairly quickly. Originally, the kick from Mayers looked to be perfectly placed, but then all of a sudden, it looked like anything could happen. Young. 20 points to six in favour of St George. Morris. Lemayne, a one-hander inside to Burgess. Five tackles gone. Look out they don't run this ball here. No, Young's in there to put the kick up. Straight up and down in the one spot almost. Johnston has got it and he's taken it into touch. So it'll be a Parramatta feed. 
Jeff Bugman going on in jumper number 26 and Stan Jurd comes off. Setri. Ron Quinn is off for Parramatta. Replaced by Mark Laurie. A great E, young, win. Beautiful piece of work by Graham Wynn. Brian Johnston in field. Morris is with him. Cronin's coming at him. Morris has got the ball now and put in the touch by Steve Broughton. So he did well, Broughton, to come from the far side of the ground. But this was a heady piece of football by Cronin. He used the sideline to his advantage. And as far as he was concerned, the others running free on the inside, they weren't his business. He was just herding Johnston into trouble. But they certainly have got an abundance of pace. They've got speed to burn the St. George backs. When you add blokes like Brian Johnston, Steve Morris, and Mike O'Connor together, they've certainly got plenty of it. Price kicking. Burgess takes it, takes it nicely, Burgess. He's a capable deputy for Brian Johnson. And he's still going away from two Parramatta tacklers, three Parramatta tacklers. That's a good run by Burgess. The crowd loving every, every metre of ground that he made. Beatty. Morris from dummy half again. O'Grady. O'Grady to play up just outside the 22. It's a cross now for Lenane. He pops a pass inside. It's on the ground. And a scrum will pack just outside the Parramatta 22. Have a look at these two. They've gone to sleep. Oh, one of them, I think the man on the bottom, Pat Jarvis, is unconscious. Oh, he's all right. It's the Parramatta player who's injured. In the EC replay, it's young Setri who's uh, winded, I would say. He went down underneath Jarvis, and uh, Peter Wynn was on top of the two of them, so Setri really, he had about... 28 stone lying on top of it. No wonder he had no wind left. O'Grady. Inside for Fraser. Fraser on the 22, offering it, but nobody there that time. Dummy half is Graham Wynn. Wynn. 15 metres out from the line. Looking dangerous in George, and while another try uh, isn't necessary, I've just got the feeling that they'll come up with one if they can hold the ball for six. Craig Young takes it to the centre of the ground. They're just 10 metres out. And they're going to hit the left again. Here's Jarvis. Morris trailing him through. Getting a pass away. And the main has gone in. The halfback has scored. Just a simple piece of handoff football. Jarvis to Morris, and then Morris, there doesn't seem to be very much of Slippery Morris, but I'll tell you what, per pound, he's as strong as any man in the game. And he, he took them on, he stood himself, and then he said, who wants it? And going down, he threw self-preservation to the wind and gave a good ball to Lenane, and the youngster picks up a try. Morris passed the ball to Jarvis and then came round and backed him up. He was able to get his hands free of the Lydiard tackle, popped the ball up to Lenane, who was doing what a good halfback should. He was backing up, and he plunges in to score a well-deserved try. See it again on the NEC replay. A perfect example of backing up the man with the ball. Jarvis, Morris and Lenane, the lead actors in a nice passage of play for the Dragons. 24 to 6, O'Connor kicks, he's got it. 
26 points to six. St. George really ramming it home now. Crowd starting to file from Jubilee Oval, or not starting. They, they started about 20 minutes ago. Out on the full, Penley to St. George. It wasn't out on the foot full, that one, uh, Ray. Peter Wynn was offside from the kick, and he, he knew it. Uh, it was just a bad bit of timing by Parramatta. The kick was a little bit slow. Wynn wasn't watching the ball, and consequently he was, uh, he was caught. My apologies. That'll teach me not to take my eyes off the game. I was looking at the... I was looking at the exits, actually. It's a long way back to Cumberland for a lot of these people. has indicated that the number 14 for St. George Burgess got a touch to that ball, so it'll be a Parramatta feed. Henry to work the scrum. Penalty to St. George. Against Henry for putting it in the second row. Siren would sound at any second, I would imagine. Ball played by Richie. Jarvis takes it up strongly. And here goes Richie from dummy half. <clears throat> He's 15 metres out from the Parramatta line. Lenane. Walsh. There's the siren. It's all over. It's It's been a tremendous victory for St. George. Defeating the Eels by 26 points to 6. There's the scoreboard. Morris, O'Connor, Johnston and Lenane. They cross for tries. O'Connor kicked five goals. And for Parramatta, there's six points. A try to Lydiard and a goal to Cronin. Craig, it's been a long wait since that preliminary final for last year. Yeah, very pleased with the effort today. Uh, last year's gone now, but uh, we'll get our revenge today. What were your impressions of the Eels minus those players still in England? Uh, they're a bit short of a bit of pace, but uh, they had a good solid side, and uh, they'll go all right. Good performance from young Steve Lane. Very good player, Steve. They'll have a good future in the game. Well played, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Thank After this break, we'll be back with Bill Anderson and the man of the match. A good game of football to start this year's Winfield Premiership. Our man of the match is the St George 5'8", Graham O'Grady. You didn't have any troubles transferring from lock to 5'8"? Uh, not today, Bill. It was a bit hard last Tuesday, though. We had a uh, long ball test on Tuesday, about an hour. Uh, and myself to uh, adapt to 5'8", Steve Lenane to adapt to half-back and fit into the side. Uh, as it's shown today, he's fit in well. Fit it in well, and uh, the old 5'8 skills are just coming back again. Parramatta was a side that beat you, beat you in the final last year and did you think you had an axe to grind and did that motivate you somewhat for today's game? Yeah, we had an axe to grind. It was a bit of motivation but that was last year. This is probably the best start we've ever had here at St George as far as I've been told. Uh, since I've been here it's the best start we've had and uh, that's all we were concerned about. Winning today with two points and as it was we've got the three grades up today and uh, it's really good as far as injury wise through the club. For taking today's Man of the Match award, it's my pleasure to present you with a cheque for $500, courtesy of NEC, and also a new prize this year, the NEC Game Ball, which, as you can see, is a magnificent trophy. Oh, thanks very much, Bill. I'd just like to thank NEC for sponsoring such things like this, and uh, we're only here to play league, and hope we uh, get our support as well. Roy, just looking on, a very strong performance all around from St. George's. 
Yeah, very disciplined, very organised, I thought. Uh, it wasn't spectacular. Uh, it was when we cut loose on the few occasions that we did, but certainly the most disciplined and organised start to the season that we've had in the last four or five years. Interesting performance from young Steve Lane. Yes, he's very quick and he can organise play as well, um, and he's a good technical kicker. Really a brilliant debut in first grade from the young bloke. Well, Ray, you're experiencing something you're not used to, and that is losing. Well, yeah, um, we didn't play well enough, too. Um, I thought we started off the game fairly well, fairly strong, but we seemed to slip completely away from our game plan and our pattern, and as it was, we suffered and played the consequences. So a mighty fine win by St George, and Roy Masters must be a happy coach tonight, but of course, John Money, he's got problems galore there at Parramatta. Let's have a look at the results of other matches played over the weekend. Yesterday, you're fully aware that Canterbury defeated Cronulla 18-4. But today, South 34, Eastern Suburbs 16, Penrith 26, Manly 14, Balmain 26, North 6, Canberra 34, Illawarra 24, and Saints here defeating Parramatta by 26-6. The Premiership table, we thought we might put the Magpies on top of the table tonight. And there they are with St George, Balmain, South, Canterbury, Penrith and Canberra, all on two. And Illawarra, Manly, Cronulla, East, North and Parramatta losing their matches over this weekend. That takes us to next weekend's round of play. Parramatta will play Canberra. That is on Saturday at Orana Park, Campbelltown. That's a big opening up there of the grandstand. West play Manly, Penrith play Balmain, Cronulla and Eastern Suburbs, South St George, Illawarra North and Canterbury, they have the bye. Wednesday night, the National Panasonic Cup match, and it's Eastern Suburbs versus Illawarra, and that match is at Lightheart Oval. It takes us out from Cogra's Jubilee Oval. I hope you've enjoyed our very first NEC big game for 1985. On behalf of Graham and Bill, I'm Ray Warren. Good night. It's hot in the nurses' quarters at MASH tonight, and it's not just the heat. Then on Cheers, the start of a two-parter. A mother and a daughter become emotionally involved with Ernie and Sam. It's MASH next up, then Cheers.